In this lecture, we'll dive into the architecture of Amazon Kronos, the innovative tool that leverages large language models to transform time series forecasting. Let's begin by understanding the overall process. We have the tokenization, we have the training, and we have the inference. And I'm going to break down each of them uh, so that you see how this actually works. Tokenization. This is the first one. Imagine that you have historical uh, time series data of temperatures. So 72, 75, 78, 76, 73. The first step in Kronos process is tokenization, where continuous data points are converted into discrete tokens. Here's how it works. The first step in tokenization is mean scaling, where the time series data is normalized to ensure it fits a manageable range. This helps in reducing the effect of outliers and makes the data more consistent. Then we have quantization. This normalized data is then divided into discrete intervals, each representing a range of values. For instance, temperatures might be grouped into ranges, let's say, you know, 70 to 72, 73 to 75, each range is then assigned a specific token, turning the continuous data into a sequence of tokens. Then we have context tokens. So these tokens represent the historical data and serve as the input for the model. The scale in the bottom part of the diagram, so this one over here, represents the quantized ranges of the normalized time series data. Each range is assigned a unique token, which the model uses to capture the overall patterns and trends, and this will lead to a better forecasting accuracy. For instance, um, the series you know, 72, 75, 78, 76, 73 might be tokenized into you know, 2,400, 2,142, and so on. Now, one question that you might have is, why are tokens not sequential? The token numbers, they are not sequential because they represent quantized ranges of the normalized data and not the actual data points themselves. Each token is an identifier for a specific range of values rather than the position in the time series. This allows the model to focus on the distribution of values rather than their exact sequence. And this leads to the capture of overall patterns. The next step is then training. So once our time series tokenized, so we take the time series, we do them in scaling, we do the quantization, then we have the context tokens, we bring the context tokens to training. What are context tokens? So the sequence of tokens from the previous step um, is fed into the model. Then we have the time series language model. This is really you know, where the magic happens. So Kronos uses a modified T5, so the text-to-text -text transformer model, and T5 treats um, every problem as a text-to-text -text problem. And this allows to process and predict sequences uh, effectively. Then we have the predicted probabilities. They represent the likelihood of each possible next token in the sequence. When the model receives context tokens, it processes them through the language model to generate a set of probabilities for the next token. And then each token has a specific probability, reflecting how likely it is to follow the given sequence based on the model's understanding. For instance, if our tokens are you know, 2400, 2142, 2282, the model calculates how probable it is that the next token uh, would be either 2245, 2310, or, you know, any other possible token. In other words, right, so we have our sequence of tokens, and the model is going to predict what is the most likely token that comes next. As well, we have cross entropy. This is a loss function used to measure the difference between the predicted probabilities and the actual next token in the sequence. 
it quantifies how well the predicted probability distribution aligns with the actual token distribution. The goal here is that we need to minimize this loss during training. If you've ever done any kind of you know, neural networks training, either with PyTorch or TensorFlow, um, this is what you would do here, right? So you aim to minimize the loss. And what we get at the end, right? So we have the training. We train the model. We predict the probabilities. What we actually want is the next token ID. And this refers to the token that the model predicts as the next in the sequence based on the highest predicted uh, probability. And this is crucial, right? Because we're building token after token after token uh, throughout this training. Now, let's zoom in on cross entropy. This is an absolutely critical component in training the Corona's model. It is the loss function that measures the difference between the predicted probabilities of the next token and actual next token in the sequence. We want to minimize this loss. And if we minimize this loss, we improve the accuracy. Essentially, the cross entropy ensures that the model's predicted probability distribution aligns closely with the actual data, and this leads to better forecasting. During training, the model generates predicted probabilities for the next token, and cross entropy calculates how well these predictions match the actual token, guiding the model's learning process. Then we have inference. In this phase, the model uses the learned patterns to predict the values. We have the context tokens. So these are the ones that the trade model took in from the historical context at the start of the prediction process. The time series language model in Amazon Kronos leverages the LLM to generate possible future tokens based on the historical context. The sequence of context tokens which are then quantized representations of the data. We have then the context tokens, which are absolutely key. They represent the historical data transformed into the quantized values. The trained model uses them to generate new tokens that predict future values. For instance, uh, if we have these context tokens, um, these would be you know the the next context token so the ones that would represent the future forecasts so after the time series language model then we get the sample tokens these tokens um so the context tokens represent the historical data transformed into quantized values the train model uses then to generate these sample tokens so these context tokens could lead to these sample tokens and these represent the inferred uh, context for the future and this is what is you know part of the actual forecast but remember right we can have multiple things and this is the probabilistic forecast so the model takes multiple future trajectories to provide a range of possible outcomes these sample tokens are then dequantized and unscaled back to their original form, and this produces the final probabilistic forecast. Probabilistic forecasting in Kronos involves generating a range of possible future values rather than one single prediction. After the context tokens are processed by the LLM, they are dequantized and unscaled back into the original value range. This results in multiple possible future trajectories, each representing a different uh, scenario. To sum it up, right? So Amazon Kronos utilizes a process to handle time series forecasting by leveraging LLMs. The initial step is tokenization, where continuous time series data is transformed into discrete tokens through mean scaling and dequantization. This allows the data to be converted into a format suitable for LLM. Each token represents a quantized range of the normalized time series data. The core of Kronos lies in the modified T5 architecture. During training, the model processes sequences of these tokens, predicting the probability of each possible next token using a cross-entropy loss function. 
This method helps the model learn the intricate patterns within the data. Finally, during inference, the model uses the historical context tokens to predict future values. This involves generating new tokens that represent potential future data points, which are then dequantized and unscaled to their original form. The model doesn't just provide a simple and single prediction, but offers a multiple future trajectory. And this allows us to understand how the model views the future. Does it uh, convert to a single point? Is it very varied? And this is what makes it robust. And this is the probabilistic part. I hope all of this um, is clear. Uh, this works very similarly to an LLM. Um, if you have any questions, uh, I'm here to help, of course. I'll see you in the next video.